Hello, Sage here on the Sage channel, and today we're back for some more singular survival. Now our battle plans, as I have a frequency or habit, I should say, of saying, are to simply go ahead, head down to the surface, and begin building ourselves a massive drill array. Now the idea here is actually going to be a bit risky. We're going to go ahead and actually assemble it using a set of probably four pistons each piston will have a multitude of other pistons on their heads, so in grand total we're probably going to have around 24 pistons or so at work. Yes, I am once again testing the game to see if it decides to blow up in our faces, but if they're going to add a feature to the game, I would expect it to work, so we're going to go ahead and fiddle with it. If things go wrong, we'll of course change our plan and just work differently. The main idea once all this is done is that we are actually going to go ahead and equip this big drill array to the bottom of the flying virus that we're drifting away from and be able to fly it to other planets or other zones, extend the pistons and drill down into the depths of a planet, maybe spinning the whole ship, maybe using a rotor. Not sure yet, I'm still a bit more scared of rotors than I am of pistons, believe it or not. Anyway, we should be getting closer to the... <laughs> you know, I thought it might happen, but I thought... I'm not good at judging distance, I don't think. Anyway, since we're now back up here, we're going to go ahead and do another thing that people have been saying say you should do this for ages. We're going to go to our production tab, we're going to click on disassembling. A little hard to tell which one's actually selected, but we're on disassembling. We're actually going to queue up about 800 missiles for disassembling. And you see it's split them all between all the different buggers, the assemblers, and it's going to go ahead and disassemble them all. And this should give us a bunch of platinum. If you're wondering where we got all of these from, and actually I'm wondering where the hell it's splitting them up because it was did a stack of 50 and apparently it's just going to keep keeping at 50 and okay. Anyway, it's only pulling 50 in at a time, I guess. Anyway, the main idea here is that we got these missiles from that pirate base we raided and a few of the drones. People were also wondering, hey, where'd you get the little bits of platinum that I noticed that you do have in your inventory because we could build some of these thruster components. That's just, again, from other down pirate things that we did harvest from. Anyway, let me go ahead and grab my tools and I'll head down to the planet. We'll start building by the sterilith. And here we go, approaching the sterilith, which you can see is in the same ice field. You can see I did indeed land the flying sausage down here. I showed a little bit of that in the very end of the last episode. Uh, it's powered down, of course, because our uranium, if you remember, is relatively low. So what we're going to do it for the beginning of this episode is simply go ahead, yeah, and just farm ourselves up some uranium, take it back up to the beautiful, beautiful massive ship we have floating up there in orbit, and then go ahead and bring it back down here. And I'm going to cut most of this out. I just wanted to keep you guys apprised of what I'm currently doing. First thing, though, is we have to figure out where the bloody uranium was. I remember we found it right near here, and it was somewhere I marked with a little bit of metal. Also, just for the record, I did just go ahead and pick up all the little pieces that we did drop when we smashed our face into the ground in our wonderful, wonderful intro. It's gotta be right by the sterilist because I remember we were right by it. should be like right here in this spot, wasn't it? Yes, I think that's it. That's it right there. Jesus, that is very difficult to see in the dark. Anyway, yep, as I said, just saying some of this to keep you guys apprised of what I'm doing. I'm uh, going to go ahead and make this really nice and wide for myself so I don't make a fool of myself and mine some of this up. Of course, I'm going to have to go ahead and empty my inventory first, but, you know, you don't need to see that. You've seen mining before. Bum -ba -la. I upgraded our little scanning drone so it'll actually be able to go down there and I can store materials and that instead of doing this silly flight back and floor. Black blah? Back and forth, because I did that once and realized that was a very, very silly plan. Alrighty, I think we're just about done mining down here, and we can get to work on actually building our station up. A little bit of uranium still left, but you can see we've cleared out a bit of this place. Yeah, a fair amount. A little hard to tell. But anyway, head back to the surface, hop in our nice little ship up here, drop off our little stuff actually first. boop -a doop I did add another thruster to get us off of here, and uh, this ship should be able to get us back to the flying virus. Did I disengage the landing gears? Now I did. There we go. Awesome. So, back to the flying virus with us. Drop that off, get it refined, and we'll get back here a lickety split to actually start construction. Coming in for a landing, or a docking, I should say. I went ahead and also popped Sage Cam, or Second Sage however you want to call it, out of its cryobot and back in. That seems to have fixed the factions thing. And if we were to look at Sage Cam's footage right now... 
that looks to be a ship actually visible. So maybe that fixed all of its silly, silly issues, and we're lucky there. Uh, as for actually being able to dock it from Sage Cam's view, that's not going to happen. I have to go ahead and use a third person cam because I don't actually have a good camera positioned for docking this silly, silly, strange vessel of ours. But hey, nonetheless, we can. Oh my god, do that. There we go. Locked up, and all that uranium should now be pulled through there and sorted out. Uh, uranium. Dun, dun, dun. Actually, it just hit me too that this reactor on this little craft here probably isn't set up properly to actually have any uranium auto sorted into it. So uh, let's just search reactor. Yeah, reactor 2, but it looks like it's actually getting some sorted into it, oddly enough, anyway. Or every 10 seconds it might be pulled out again. Who knows? We'll find out. But you can see here, though, we do have 40 uranium, 40 uranium. If we go look at our disassembling, it's had, well, oddly, little success with these. Um, very odd, that, actually. I would have expected to have more success grinding down those tools. Let's actually cancel that. Go to tools and disassemble the gun. No, are you in? Oh, and only disassemble it, so it should have a bunch of those, disassemble a bunch of those, and a bunch of these. As well as, I believe, oh no, we just added more guns, didn't we? These here, there we go. And we should have a tool area. Yep, and sure enough, there are still a bunch of all of those to be disassembled, so. Not sure why that was locked up. Anyway, it looks like it's doing its job now. Look at the split. This is assembling them pretty quick. Uh, and then we can queue up some more of those missiles. And of course we're doing that because they got uranium and platinum in it. In very small amounts, but we have tons of them, so it gets the job done. Let's also go to our control panel and type in reactor. And there we go, large reactor 2. We want to try to copy this so we can get some uranium in this poor little thing. Uh, there we go, click on you again, name. Ba -ba -da, and we'll just set you to have tins. You don't need such a silly, silly amount, little cargo drone. So now that we got all of our uranium sorted out, what I'm going to go ahead and do is select this cargo container, tell it to be Tim Locked. Tim Locked, there we go. Hopefully that'll work and update in a second. And what we're going to do is transfer some inventory into it, to be more exact, some uranium into it. Because our ship down on the planet, the Flying Sausage, is in dire need of some uranium. Uh, and we're looking for some large stacks here because I know we have some large stacks now. There we go. There's a stack of 40 and a stack of 40. Grab those. And it'll, of course, go ahead and transfer some more into a lot of these in a minute. And it's producing more by the second. Anyway, we got our uranium now. Um, can I hold 100 in my inventory? I can. You know what? We're actually going to leave this ship here docked up. And we're even going to go ahead and eh, we'll just leave it as is. It's the little thrusters we'll just leave on. I'm sure they won't do very, very much. And let's head back down to the planet now and start working on our proper facility. There we go. Back to the flying sausage. Now, a few people did say, hey, why on earth are you trying to retrofit this to work in the atmosphere and down on a planet? You know you're just adding more and more weight to this already very dangerous ship. Yes, I do know. But that was our plan all along, remember, was to have a ship that could work in space down on planets well, in space and down on the planet. And that's what we've done for the most part. Oh, let's get 40 in you. Well, I can't reach the other ones. We'll just turn on all of our reactors, I guess. Uh, and the best way to do that is from a cockpit, I think it's. So press Y, and that didn't do anything. And press Y, and now everything's up and running. Good. There we go. And so now I can check out all of our reactors from one connection point. Reactors. Um, and we'll just drop all of you into there. And I think we have one more reactor scattered about here somewhere. There he is. And we'll just bring 20 down to that one, since they're not auto-sorting. There we go. But anyway, that's what I've been planning all along, so that's why we went ahead and set this ship up as it is, so it'll function down on planets and up here. Of course, once we get back to a planet, we might find ourselves in a spot of bother where it no longer works too well since the added weight, but, well, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Anyway, now that we have this functional, I'm going to quick save, since we've had a rather successful evening, and I'm going to find our little mining area, and go ahead and start, well, building up our huge mountain of machinery to get everything working. Anyway, we're getting some wonderful ship fuel critical alerts here as we approach, but I think that's just once again because the batteries are, well, as we've said, oh, well, maybe not. I don't know. They seem to be just set to discharge. If we go ahead and just turn the batteries off, how's our power levels? 
Okay, so we can hit some overloads if we go in multiple directions at once. Very, very interesting. Eh. Anyway, I think we'll be fine though. We'll turn our batteries back on. They're on default. 30% power usage. And we move and now, now it's all over the place. But anyway, we're not dropping out of the sky instantaneously, which means everything should be fine. And as we know, we just dropped a bunch of uranium in there. So we should be all right for quite a while. Reactor, yeah, 40, 40, and the other one should still be, yeah, 20. So we should be all right for quite some time. Um, I am going to go ahead and look at our reactors here just to make sure they're actually turned on and not being something else. So, yep, turned on. Uh, and let's get to work. And this is the point where SageCam was supposed to show us slowly building the whole place up, but I found the issue is something to do with SageCam's range. If your actual character is far enough away, SageCam will not at all show what is happening. Oh my god, my character vanish. I... Here's where my character actually is. We're still sitting right here. Looks like it has something to do with range from your actual character, not where the spectator cam is, which is a bit of an issue because, well, as we've said before, we want to leave the ship in orbit to be gathering power, so we're going to be building from right here. Anyway, let's get right to this. The first thing we're going to be adding in, believe it or not, is just a seven pole support, a center support. So I'm grabbing some of those buggers right there. We need to grab ourselves our welder back out of that. There we are. And we're going to add it shooting up from right around here because I believe this is sort of the middle point of all of our resources. Um, our drill doesn't have the best range, but I know there's some uranium about. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and just start it right up. Ba -ba -da. So press R to switch over to large grids. Look at that, it's actually letting us put it in the ground, finally, for all these years. Go ahead and add this up a little bit. There we go, we got the T-joint in, and I should say that second Sage is set to be in a cockpit that is not set as main cockpit, or more easily said, I've set the cockpit I'm in to main cockpit, second Sage's cockpit not so much, so I can take control at any time. Let's go ahead and weld up this top joint here really, really quickly, and then we'll continue planning out and building out the first area of our large drilling array. There we go, the first set of pistons go in, lickety split, then I'm going to name them all, make sure they have a name that makes sense, like piston layer one, and I'm going to continue on putting other layers in. Or something like this will happen, where suddenly, oh dear lord god, I welded the one up. And I can't move all of a sudden. Oh, no, nope, suddenly I'm able to move again. That was horrific. There we go, guys and gals. That's all those basic ones built up. And they're all been, well, they've all been named. Pretty simple and straightforward. The top layer is all their names, as in, well, all their colors, as in G for green, R for red, so on and so forth, followed by piston, followed by the layer they're on. So all of the ones on the top have the correct color, than what they are, and then the layer they're on, and so on and so forth. It goes all the way down to the very bottom where we would have blue piston layer four. So pretty, pretty, pretty simple and straightforward. Hopefully it'll all work well. We're going to go. What we're going to go ahead and do now is simply hook up a reactor on the top here to get it some very basic power. Uh, in fact, I think we'll even do it off to the side. There we go. Reactor up and running. Well, pretty much. Just got to grab a little tiny bit of uranium. I think we'll go with five uranium. Shouldn't require much at all, really. Uh, we'll grab ten. Why not? Simple and straightforward. Plop it in there. And we're going to go ahead and start connecting all these things up now. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and extend. I think we should have enough room if we do this. You all the way out. So we're going to go ahead and say reverse on you. You should oink, well, uh, not oink, extend yourself all the way out. In fact, we're going to do it at the bottom ones. That way, less distance to travel when it comes to extending these and retracting them again. So you uh, reverse yourself kindly. Thank you very much. And then on the bottom of here, we're going to go ahead and say uh, block, block, block. And then we're going to go ahead and connect you over to where another one is going to connect in. And once this is all said and done... We should, will we be able to actually, can you actually connect to the side of this right here? You can. So we'll be able to replace these with actual conveyor blocks. Once everything is said and done, as I said, uh, it should be about right here, right? Blink. And that's about right. Okie dokie. And so this one is going to need to be a merge block. There we go. Grab that one and plop that in right about 
Or do we want to do it? There we go. There. They all need to be a merge block as well. And what I'm going to do is just extend this one down and hopefully they should merge together. I'm going to do the same for all of these actually. Should be pretty simple and straightforward. And hopefully once we're done this will mean we'll have a reasonable amount of stability with this silly silly structure of ours. If not, well, back to the drawing board I guess, but at least we'll have once again done a little tiny test of sorts. Alrighty, there we go. Great success, as some might say. Uh, and so now we can go ahead and we'll do a quick save, just in case, of course, if the universe decides to implode, hopefully it won't take us all with it. And we'll reverse this guy right here. And hopefully they'll reach down and connect Lickety Split without issue. Should it have an issue, well, at least hopefully it'll be enjoyable to watch. Okay, here we go, approaching. Uh, everything's looking pretty, pretty good. Pretty good, they gone yellow, and they've connected. A little bit of a wiggle, a little bit of a wobble, but overall, nothing too bad. Very good. Alrighty, let's go ahead, extend this one as well. Uh, reverse, there we go. Should be on its way down. Coolio. And then once these are done, we can select layer four, that's the fourth layer down, and just go ahead and tell them all to retract at the same time. They should all pull themselves back up lickety splits without any issue. Then comes the actual installation of the drill platform. Alright, drill <laughs> drill platform. And if that goes to plan, um, well, actually, I'm not sure what our plan is exactly on that, because I'd like to try to put a rotor dead in the center, and then just have this huge spinning thing that would just gently spin around, and we could lower these super slowly as it spins around and drill down the whole world. I'm, of course, terrified that doing anything of that will, well, annihilate everything we've ever built, but if it is successful, it could be pretty dang awesome. Oh my god, this is actually working. I'm shocked. <laughs> Quick save. We are going to have to move our center support if we do do that, though. But, uh, well, we'll cross that bridge in a second here. So let's make some layers here. Or some groups, I should say. We're not in Photoshop. There we go. It's all the layers built. And let's go ahead and quick save once again. Because I'm becoming paranoid. And a layer four. Reverse. Boop. That should be all of them pulling up at the same time. And it would appear that it is working as intended. Oh, well, I'd say Space Engineers has come a long way from the old days when any time I've ever tried anything like this, the entire universe imploded. Jesus Christ, it's a miracle. Alrighty, well, let's go ahead really quickly, and now that we've got this working, let's uh, add some supports shooting out, um, I guess maybe this way. And we'll build it down into a mountainside or something. That way we just have some supports. And we can get to the center supports. That way we can get to work on our spinny spinny drill of doom. Alrighty, that looks like that's all connected up. You can see clearly it's connected into the ground. I was trying to put it off to the side as well. But I figured let's not risk it. Even though now I find the urge to weld this up as well. So I've done so just to make sure it's a good connection point. That all looks golden. Uh, we're now going to go ahead, fly up here, do a quick, quick save. And then I'm just going to hit this with our drill because I don't have a grinder with us. Just as proof of concept, it worked! Yay! It did dent these because apparently just taking out one piece of barely even started material means the whole area around it gets damaged to a notable amount. Yeah. Anyway, this is now all supported via this very odd crane-like piece in there. Alrighty, it means we can get rid of that as soon as I get myself a grinder. And with that all sorted, let's go ahead and actually grab a layer 4 once again. Uh, there we go, reverse that out, and we're actually going to go start working on removing the merge blocks. Because we don't need merge blocks there anymore, what we need is a sturdy permanent support. So I'm actually going to go ahead and put a block like this right here. Boop. So it should connect, and then I'm going to build up some stuff right here. And that way we can remove the merge blocks, and actually go ahead and put conveyor blocks in right there instead of that. Uh, boop, like so, there we are. And I'll grind this out by hand. I don't see any reason to bring this whole ship in here. Did I really just do that? No, oh, I got carried away. Zoned out thinking about something else. I've disconnected one of them. Bloody hell. That was a derp and a half, but luckily it should be an easy fix. As long as nothing goes terribly wrong, we simply reverse this. And then reverse it again. It should connect. That didn't work and it's completely screwed up. I'm reloading. 
Alrighty then, everything reloaded, we lost some progress, but just a minor amount, and we're going to connect these up a slightly different way. Since they're already all connected together, we can just do something like this, and now as we cut apart the sections below, we shouldn't have any, well, really terrible issues. Or at least that's the idea. I just realized I haven't even extended the pistons yet, which means these might not even be built to the correct part. Deary, deary, lord, that could have been troublesome, eh? Anyway... Part 4, reverse, there we go once again. Looks like the load hasn't caused any nightmare glitches. Well, it's afraid that we might have some, but looks like we got very lucky there. There we go, connect all those together. Connect you as well, you silly buggers. Alrighty, everything's together. And now we can go ahead and remove everything below that. And in fact, I could go ahead and actually use this cockpit if I hadn't stuck Second Sage in it. I would have to scroll over and pop him out and blah 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 blah. I think it's quicker just for me to do it by hand. Luckily, we have Sage Cam, so I can fast forward this. And trust me, it's definitely quicker doing this by hand than trying to very slowly navigate the flying sausage about. 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 I'm getting full of myself. In my Kermity Frog boys. Kermity Frog here. And I figure a little bit of redundancy never really hurt anyone, so it couldn't hurt to have a little bit extra here. Now, I'm not going to say that I just had to do all that again because I accidentally quick loaded the game instead of quick saving it, but I just had to do all that again. And boy oh boy was that annoying. Also, I did use the actual flying sausage this time and it was, believe it or not, quicker. That says quick save, right? Yes, it does. So let's press enter on that. Oh, relief, relief, relief. Anyway, let's go ahead, use the flying sausage, and weld this bloody thing up, shall we? So we can have all these components in place. So I can't... Why can't I? This is main cockpit. Second stage! Someone else is using ship. God dang it. What? <laughs> Uh, now autopilot is magically enabled? Now you're yelling at me that autopilot is... Remote? Can we don't even have a remote control. Control... Rem... You little... Clearly nobody's in the ship. We hop in. Autopilot somehow magically engaged. Hop in this one. I still can't control it. You're telling me that now, after everything, the ship is just magically uncontrollable. But because two people got in it at the same time, the ship's just not usable? That's how this works now? It's not telling me that anything is out of my control here. Let's see, let's see. Is this... This isn't set as the main cockpit. This is main cockpit, no longer main cockpit. Okay, cool. Let's go to the other cockpit. Go into K and make you the main cockpit. Now we should be able to control the ship, right? No... No six such luck. Oh my god, the ship magically teleported five feet away. What an odd thing, and it's suddenly functional. How wonderful! Anyway, with that massive faff suddenly fixed, uh, let's go ahead and uh, weld all this stuff up here. I'm going to have to do almost all of this just from below. Now, honestly, I should probably do this with those metal railings across that I had originally. But <laughs> We're still in creative mode. Son of a Don Quixote. Was, was the button to bring it up? Alt F10. No more. There we go. You guys didn't see anything. That didn't just appear there. I think you'll agree I had to do that because the ship clearly just was not functioning. And when a ship says autopilot engage when you actually don't have an autopilot or remote control block on the ship, it's, um, well, it's a little bit of an issue, isn't it? There we go. Put all that in. Hop back in our cockpit. Hopefully it'll actually work. It does. Cool. And let's weld this up. Alrighty, that was pretty dang successful, wouldn't you say? So now that we have all those welded up and actually connected up in a functional manner, I'm going to go ahead and reverse layer 4. That should bring layer 4 all the way back up. Boop. 
Yep, that looks like it's working pretty well. And so now this will give us more room to go ahead and install the drill platform on the bottom of this. And the first thing for in that drill platform we're going to need is not a piston, it is a rotor. Uh, R -T -O -R, rotor. We're going to go with the advanced rotor so we have the pipe pass through it. We had some fun with these in the past, but hopefully this one will be slightly more successful. And if you don't know when I say fun, I mean go look up a rotor destruction montage and, um, well... Yeah, I had a lot of trouble. With one of these in the past, but A, it turned out a lot of it was due to actually the safety locks, believe it or not. So long as we don't fiddle with that too much and just turn on all of our safety locks when we're ready to move the whole ship up into orbit, we should be fine. Anyway, I gotta weld that up a little bit more and then get to work on the drills. Oh shit, I could have saved a lot of materials actually. Yeah, look at this. Bugger. Cannot place ship would exceed regulations. What regulations are you freaking talking about? Regul is there a drill limit? I don't know. Thus is thus is. So what? It is a drill limit. Suddenly the ship would have too many drills. There's a regular. Since when was there a regulation on drill limits? Well, well, well. It looks like there must be some sort of drill limit. Even though I'm pretty dang sure I never heard of that being added, it looks like there is one. So we're going to cut down that side and this side. And we're actually going to go ahead, switch to block, and we're going to color these accordingly. Uh, yellow blocks over here. So all these will be colored in yellow. That way we know the original starting point. And green on the other side. Uh, Flippity plop plop plop. And, and that way, if ever we should need to, well, change any of this stuff out and it comes to which ones are the longer ones, it'll be pretty simple. The green and the yellow ones are the longer of the two, but one extra drill on each. Okie dokie. Well, that's sorted. Sort of. Anyhow, let's go ahead and get our welding ship down there and start welding these up now. Stupid team. Did I really just cut that with my thrusters? God dang it. And my bad. Well, shite. Uh, we got most of the way done, but it looks like we've run out of small steel tubes? Is that really it? We've run out of small steel tubes and steel plates. That's going to be the thing that stops us from getting this done? Dear Lord God. Well, since that does indeed seem to be the case, I'm going to go ahead, uh, run down to the little dinky mine down here really quick like, grab us up some more uranium, because I believe there is, yes, still a fair amount of uranium scattered about in here, until my inventory's full, and then I'm going to go ahead and fly the flying sausage all the way back up to our main craft, the iron virus, and go ahead and restock and come back down here and finish this dang thing up since we've made a fair amount of progress and, well, we still have yet to test it. Ooh, I just realized our bottles are about full, or empty, which uh, could be very bad. Alrighty, so let's go ahead, hop in here. Uh, I think we're good to go and lift off, kit ourselves up into orbit lickety split. Uh, there is our lovely, lovely thing. It's amazing, actually, that it's not clumping all of those together into, like, the... There, like that. Like, 20 signals detected. Or, like, four different signals detected. But, um, yeah, it does that when I press H and tab through them. Okay, I guess it makes sense that now that they're separated. But, uh, earlier, hmm, didn't seem so, so much logical. Anyway, we seem to have broken the planet's gravity lickety split without even a second thought. The only difficulty now is simply going to be slowing down and, of course, our approach to docking. Which should be pretty easy as long as we don't aim ourselves directly at the iron virus. Boy, oh boy, I love flying up to this thing because it is such a large structure. And obviously, once we get the drills and everything attached, it's going to get bigger. And my plans for this thing, as I've sort of vaguely mentioned before, are to continue expanding it. Because I want this thing to be, well, a monstrosity. A absolute monstrosity. The sort of thing where, while well, you look at it flying through the sky and you say, well, yeah, that would literally take me hours upon hours to walk from side to side. Oh my god, we're drifting a little bit. This is going to take a while to dock, so I'm just going to go ahead and fast forward our crazy docking attempts here. Think. There we go. That wasn't too bad, actually. That uh, was about four minutes, though. Or, I don't know, probably about only two. Anyway... 
go ahead and drop that off. It'll sort everything out. We'll even drop these bottles off there. Uh, search up the word bottle itself and get ourselves a little bit more hydrogen and another oxygen bottle or two. There we go. Also, our overall supplies should be shifting about right now and making sure this thing is stockpiled back up. It's another default one for when we were gathering materials. Um, there we go. Got a fair amount of those. Thruster components loaded in. What else do we have here? Small steel tubes. That's one of the things we ran out of. That's looking pretty good. Small steel tubes again. Looking pretty good. Awesome. Well, that will do it for today. Honestly, this is... Editor Sage talking, past Sage rambled on, checking uranium and stuff. But yeah, that was about it. Lad came and poked me and said, Daddy, food time, snuggle time, sleep time. So I got off the computer and went and did all that. Yeah, great episode. A lot of that had Second Sage's camera in mind, believe it or not. There's a lot of stuff I caught. Caught? Cut probably 10 minutes of talking that were just directly addressing Second Sage. And some things we did. Yeah. Very upsetting that I lost all that. Anyway, that's that. If you guys enjoyed this video, once again, I invite you to like and possibly share. If you disliked, consider disliking it and then telling me why. Anyway, guys and gals, thanks a bunch for watching, and I shall see you all next time. Ta-ta.